Hi, um, welcome to Long Road Sociology Department. My name's Ian Osborne and I'm the course team leader for sociology and one of your teachers next year. Um, the purpose of this little presentation is to really introduce you to the summer work that we'd like you to do before you start in September. Um, it's going to introduce you to some of the key sort of concepts, some of the themes that we are going to study in the course and hopefully lay a bit of a foundation for the work that you're going to do later on. OK, now, so you've chosen to study sociology, the fantastic subject, and um, you're going to really enjoy it. It's, we think it's probably one of the most important subjects on the curriculum. Um, it's absolutely relevant. It's absolutely contemporary, and it's going to help you understand the big issues that are out there. Now, as I present this, uh, one of the biggest issues um, alongside the obviously the coronavirus pandemic is the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. And we're watching that develop at the moment. Um, now, this this is an area that we study. So we, we look at we look at racism, we look at rioting, we look at conflict and social change. Um, so sociology gives you and us the tools to understand these these big events that are happening out there in the real world. Now, obviously, America's in absolute turmoil at the moment, um, but we know that these sort of times where there's such darkness can actually bring hope for change. And with any luck, we'll see a movement towards a better society. Now. Enough of all that, we're going to move on to just explain a little bit about this summer work that we'd like you to do. And we've chosen to do it on education, which is one of the key areas in the first year of your course. And one of those areas within that is looking at um, differential educational achievement among social groups. So we look at things like uh, who does better at school, who tends not to do so well. So in terms of ethnicity, we know that certain ethnic groups do better than others. So we know that um, Indian students, Chinese kids do really well at school on the whole. And then other groups don't do so well. So if we look at the white working class, if we look at Pakistani kids and Afro-Caribbean boys in particular, they don't do as well. Um, we're going to focus on social class for this little exercise. And if you look at that diagram in front of you, you can see that um, educational attainment is very, very closely related to social class. In fact, social class is the single most important factor determining educational success and failure. So the higher your class, the higher your performance generally. OK, so sociologists, um, whoops, sociologists uh, look at explaining this, but let me just um, illustrate that a bit more. So compared to his or her middle class counterpart, a working class child is more likely to start on it, start school and able to read. They're more likely to be diagnosed with a learning or emotional disorder. They score lower at SATs. They're more likely to go to a failing school. They're more likely to be placed in lower sets. And they're more likely to miss school through illness. They're more likely to be excluded from school and they get lower GCSEs. They're less likely to stay on. They're less likely to do A-levels, etc. And, uh, and they're less likely to go to university. If they do go to university, they're less likely to go to a Russell Group university. They're less likely to get a good degree and they're much less likely to get a postgraduate qualification and a graduate type job. So it's a massively important factor, social class and, and educational attainment. Now, sociologists are in the business of trying to understand these inequalities and they've come up with a number of theories and number of explanations for why this occurs um, could be material inequalities. So if you look at those students on there, they go to Harrow Public School. The fees for Harrow are about £40,000 a year. The sort of money that the average secondary school state pupil gets spent on their education is more like five or £6,000 a year. So the kids at Harrow are getting eight times the amount spent on them. So those material inequalities are a big factor. We're going to come back to that. Other factors, though, pointed out by sociologists are things like cultural deprivation. 
the idea that, that, that working class culture lacks the norms, the values, the beliefs necessary for educational success. It's linked to speech codes, the way we speak might have an impact. It's linked to parental interest. One sociologist argues that parental interest is the most important factor determining educational success or failure. It seems to be the case, according to those theorists, that working class parents are less interested in their kids' education than middle class ones. Others criticise that. They say it's not about um, deprivation as much as difference. Working class culture is different to middle class culture. Middle class kids and upper class kids possess what we call cultural capital, which is basically middle class knowledge. The school system is a middle class institution. So if you've got that culture, that knowledge, you're at an advantage. So that's the reason why those kids succeed. Then we'll, we'll look at internal factors. It could be down to things like teacher expectations. It could be that certain kids, working class kids, are more likely to get labelled as low achievers. And this could lead to what we call self-fulfilling prophecies. Now, we're going to concentrate on one of these explanations for the purposes of this bit of work. And we're going to concentrate on material deprivation and educational underachievement. Now, the first task that we want you to do is watch a documentary film that came out in December of last year. So it's really, really recent. And it's called Growing Up Poor, Britain's Redline Kids. It was a Channel 4 Dispatches documentary. Now, they, they followed three, three kids for a, for a year who were living in poverty. Um, and what I want you to do is watch the film and take notes. We've got a, a sort of a sheet to help you take those notes. So it's going to introduce you to three kids. Courtney from Cambridge, Danielle from, from um, Sudbury in Suffolk, and Rose from Morecambe in Lancashire. And the documentary shows you what their lives are like, and it gives you an insight into the experiences of poverty, why they're living in poverty, and particularly the impact this poverty is going to have on their educational success. So. After you've taken those notes, there's some questions and that's activity too, and you answer those relatively short answer questions. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, activity three that we want you to do is, is something to do with dramatised poverty. Now, we use a lot of videos in sociology. We, we use a lot of clips from documentaries, but we also use a lot of clips from films and dramas. Um, because often they're better at, at getting over the, the, the experience of things like poverty or uh, being in a gang or whatever it is we're studying. So we're going to watch a clip from a film called I, Daniel Blake, uh, which basically is centred around um, a family um, who are living in poverty. Um, so we're going to watch that clip and then you're going to watch a little debate, a clip of a debate between the director of that film and a conservative government minister who are debating the, the, the uh, accuracy of the film. Does it depict the reality of poverty in Britain today? So I want you to watch that. Um, I want you to summarise the debate. What are the different sides of the debate saying? And then come to a conclusion about which side of the debate you find much more convincing than the other. OK. That's that one. Um, then we're going to look into social policy a little bit. Social policy refers to the actions, plans and programmes of government bodies and agencies that aim to deal with a problem or achieve a goal. Now, universal credit is the flagship policy that the government is implementing as an approach to dealing with poverty. And it's mentioned in all the clips that we've seen so far. Um, all those families that, that are in the documentary are on universal credit. Ken Loach, the director of the film, is talking about universal credit in the clip, in the debate. Now, um, this is a little article from the BBC website, which is looking at the social policy of universal credit. And you have to read that and answer some questions on that. Now, last thing, the last activity, it's about finding out more about sociology. So this is the, the, the freest 
activity it gives you a lot of freedom so we want you to select at least one of these options so there's a load of options on the sheet when you get it uh, various sociology books like a Glasgow Gang Observe, the classic study of participant observation, joining a gang. Um, there's films that you can watch. So 13th uh, relates to the 13th Amendment in the American Constitution about the abolition of slavery. But the film contends that black people in America are still living in a sort of slavery. There's more people in prison in America today than there were slaves during the time of slavery. So, so we just swap one for the other, the, the argument goes. So that's a really interesting film and very relevant given the, the recent events. Um, there's other op options, things like listening to podcasts, listening to radio programs about sociology. So the idea is that you do one of these things, at least one of these things, uh, and write a summary of what you've learned from that. We've got the two uh, textbooks that we use there, so it might be a good idea to get a hold of them as well. Um, lastly, um, I haven't put it on this screen, but we take it for granted that you're interested in current affairs. So we would expect you to keep up with the news, um, whether that's by reading newspapers, and that can be online, watching, watching news programmes, watching documentaries. The best news programmes are Newsnight, on BBC Two at 10.45 or Channel 4 News. These are the most analytical of our news programmes and give you more of an insight into what's going on. Um, so that would be really good. So we hope you enjoy doing these, these activities. Um, we know you're going to enjoy studying sociology at Long Road. We are really looking forward to getting back to normal, getting back in the classroom and really looking forward to meeting you in September. So have a nice summer and we'll see you then. Bye bye.